I've got to be a madman or something because I put together a seven round mock draft. Now, let me tell you, this video took probably eight hours to put together. That's not exaggerating with the slide designs. And then on my good friend, the mock draft guy came on, we made these picks together. So if you guys are coming from his channel, this is the same seven round mock draft that he had only my take on it. There's some really, really good drafts in out there. Haven't done a seven round mock draft ever before on this channel. And I decided to put it together. Now we went zero trades. So you'll see like Minnesota, they're going to trade up more than likely into the top five. We decided to stick with 11 and 23 and pick because if we start trading, it would get chaotic really quickly. Secondly, we went through all seven rounds, alternating picks. So he started off with Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and then we just kind of went back and forth. This took a very long time to put together. So if you guys could leave a like, share this video, subscribe if you are new. I love doing unique draft content. I've got some incredible guests coming on in the next couple of weeks that you guys are not going to want to miss. So ring that notification bell. Stay tuned for all the content I've got coming out. Let's go ahead and get into it. We're starting off. We're going in alphabetical order, starting off with the A's, and that's going to be the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I think Arizona might have had the best draft here. We'll go down the line here. Marvin Harrison Jr., you get the best wide receiver prospect in a long time. I think that's a no-brainer. Kool-Aid McKinstry at pick 27. I absolutely love the value. He's got he's got the foot question marks there, but I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be one of the better corners in this class. I still see him as a first-round pick. And then somehow Byron Murphy fell out of the first round, and we had to snag him for the Arizona Cardinals. I think the value there was tremendous. Um, some guys fell down the board. Byron Murphy, one of the better pass rushers from the interior, and we know Gannon loves those pass rushing defensive tackles. Then we went with Christian Mahogany, who is a nasty run blocker, has some very high athletic upside. I think he's going to be a very good player in the league. We took Braylon Allen at number 71. So for our guy Michael Marlowe out there, you're going to love that pick. Braylon Allen, a powerful back. He's got the speed, and he's got not a lot of miles on his legs. So you'll love that. Then we went with Jonah Ellis out of Utah. He's still on the board at 90. Very athletic edge rusher. He had a bit of a shoulder surgery, but when you saw him pre-injury, he's explosive. He's got good hands, some pass rush moves. His run defense isn't great, but as a designated pass rusher for the Cardinals, I love that value. Then we went with Matt Gonclaves, the offensive tackle out of Pitt. Solid value, going to be a rotational guy. Anthony Gold might be the pick that people don't love, but a receiver from Oregon State with the new return rules, this guy flies down the field. With the new kick return rules, I think you absolutely could see Anthony Gold hear his name picked in the fifth round. We went Tyron Harper, Hopper, excuse me, the linebacker out of Missouri. Jarvis Brownlee, the corner out of Louisville. I know a lot of people are higher on him. Guy that's going to get penalized a lot. He's way too physical at times. We'll see how it translates. I like I think Brownlee at 186 is good value. And then Andrew Rame, an underrated center in this draft class at number 226. This is a Cardinals team with a lot of draft picks. And I think they made the most of them. Absolutely dominated this draft. And uh, I think this was, would be excellent if Arizona came away with these guys. Next up, we got the Atlanta Falcons. Now, we went primarily defense for this team because this team's addressed it heavily uh, on the offensive side of the football and free agency. You bring in Darnell Mooney. You bring in Kirk Cousins. But this team still has needs on the defensive side. And we did add a really good receiver in the second round in Xavier Worthy, which has been one of my dream picks to make for months. A speedster who could play on the outside, an incredible separator. Yes, the hands can be a concern. But now you've got Pitts, Worthy, London, Mooney, Bijan Robinson. That's incredible. Also, we went another Texas guy, Christian Jones, in the fifth round to just get a nice rotational tackle. I like Christian Jones quite a bit. But the defense is where they made their money in this draft. You get Jared Verse, arguably the best edge rusher in the draft class. Um, I think he's got the versatility to play in a 3-4. He can play in a 4-3. You love that. We snagged Kyrie Jackson on the third round. I love this pick for them. You pair him on the opposite side of A.J. Terrell. 6'3", 190 pounds. He's got incredible length, size on the outside, and had a very good productive season for Oregon. At number 79, we took Rook Orohiro out of Clemson just to assure up that interior of their defensive line a little bit more, add some beef to their defensive front. 
Then we took one of my favorite players in the draft in Dadrian Taylor Demerson. Add another safety who can play that free safety role. Jesse Bates can be in that strong safety role. He's a little undersized, yes, but this guy is explosive. Uh, very reminiscent of the Honey Badger. Um, at number 187, we took J.D. Bertrand out of Notre Dame. Absolutely love that pick as well. A cerebral athlete. Just a linebacker who was very smart, high football IQ. The captain is what he was nicknamed at Notre Dame. You get some good value at 187. And then at 197, he's still sitting there. We took Kalen King. Look, King is a guy that had a absolutely horrible pre-draft process. A bad senior bowl, a bad draft combine. I still think you look at that season in 2022 when he played on the opposite side of Joey Porter Jr., that gives you some hope. Very interested to see kind of where Kalen King is going to fit in the league, but I think he there's a chance he could go undrafted. I think that's how bad of a pre-draft process he has, but we decided to take him here at 197. I think this is a solid draft for the Falcons. You got some really good defensive players, some guys that are going to help that defensive front and help them contend for the division next year. Then we had the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I do like what Baltimore did quite a bit. We took Tyler Guyton with the first-round pick. You're losing – Morgan Moses, John Simpson's out. I think O-line is going to be a position that the Ravens are going to have to draft. Uh, we didn't just go with one Oklahoma tackle. We took both. We took Walter Rouse, who could be a future left tackle, probably going to be a rotational guy for you at the next level. With these later round picks, you don't really pay too much attention to them. Not a lot of them get these crazy opportunities, but you never know. Rouse has some solid athletic upside. Troy Franklin at 62 is becoming one of my favorite picks to make for the Ravens. He's a deep ball threat. He's a speedster. You give him alongside Zay Flowers, so I think he's a little bit of a better separator. You'll love that if you are the Ravens. You get some more size in that receiver room. Brandon Dorless was a guy that we took at 93. Could play defensive tackle, could play edge, could be a bit of an odd front kind of guy. I really like his fit for the Ravens. We went Javon Bullard at number 113. Could play that third safety role that the Ravens absolutely covet. But he also can play slot nickel corner, which you love to see as well. At 130, we went Elijah Jones from Boston College. Another secondary piece for them. And we went again in the secondary. Took Tarheeb Still from Maryland at 250. Just keep the Maryland guys in Maryland. Dylan Lauby at 165. I know they've got Keaton Mitchell. I know they got Derrick Henry. Lauby has some really interesting potential as a good receiving back. You could maybe even play him in the slot if you really wanted to. I like his fit. And then Nathaniel Watson as the final pick as a very good tackling linebacker at 228. I think this is a very solid draft for the Ravens. You get some solid pieces in that secondary. You get some weapons and some protection for your quarterback. I think this is an A draft for Baltimore. At number Four, the next team are the Buffalo Bills. Now I'm going to be completely honest. The Bills were the team that we were just laughing at because this team was very tough to draft for. When you look at it, though, it doesn't actually come out as bad as you thought. Brian Thomas Jr. fell at 28. I think that's excellent for Buffalo. You get size, speed, route running. At number 28, you get exactly the type of receivers you need to replace Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. Then you go Tyler Newbin at 60. You're feeling very good. Arguably the best safety in the class. He is my number one safety. I think the value at 60 doesn't normally fall that far for me in the draft. I'm going to take him there. Then it got a little weird around this middle. Uh, Satoya, Satoya Lamea out of Utah. I know it says lame. That is not what it's supposed to say. Lamea out of Utah has some very interesting versatility. Can play offensive guard, can play center, can play tackle, just gives them some nice flexibility on the O-line. Jalex Hunt, another guy who gives you defensive flexibility. You could play him off the edge. You could play him as a linebacker. Maybe he's a bit undersized, but he's very athletic. We took him in the fourth. Justin Aboigby from Alabama is a guy that a lot of people really like. I'm not the highest on him, but in the fifth round, I thought the value to pair alongside Gabe Davis was very intriguing. We took Brendan Rice at number 160. Um, again, not a guy I'm particularly high on. I know that a lot of people like him, but this guy has some really good size. He's physical. I think he's a perfect Gabe Davis replacement. At number 163, we took Delmar Glaze out of Maryland. Stay tuned for next week because I will be doing a prospect spotlight on Delmar Glaze. This guy is freaking incredible. One of the most underappreciated players in this draft class. That's all I'm going to say. He can play tackle, can swing guard. 
I love Delmar Glaze. At 200, we took Maurice Leofau out of Notre Dame. Love that pick. He plays with his hair on fire. I think he's a lot more athletic than the numbers are going to lead you to believe. And number 204, we took Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. He kind of reminds me a little bit of like a mini Saquon, just big legs, hard runner. I like him there. And then we took Nehemiah Pritchett to finish the draft at 248. It's really not a bad draft for the Buffalo Bills. It's not incredible, I don't think, but I think this is quality. They get positions of need everywhere, and I think this is a solid draft for Buffalo. Next up, we got the Carolina Panthers, who don't have as many picks, and I think they made the most of them. We took Xavier Leggett with our first pick at 33. I know a lot of people aren't the highest on Leggett. I'm not one of them. Excuse me. I think he's got size, speed, hands. You will love everything he has to offer. I take him at 33. Darius Robinson's on the board at 39. Look, I love his versatility. This is a team that can play 3-4, which is their position where they ran last year. You've got Derek Brown there. You just get more defensive line help, which I think was a major need for them. We took Darius Robinson. Then we went Cedric Van Pran out of Georgia. I'm not the highest on Cedric Van Pran, but the production is pretty hard to deny. He's been very productive, and I think this team could use some offensive line help. They improved the guards. Uh, we took Cedric Van Pran. And then Jalen Wright was on the board at 101. I would sprint the card in if I was Carolina. I consider taking him at 65. Uh, just a speedy back. I think he's a lot better than Miles Sanders is going to be for you. Then you took Josh Newton at 141. I love that pick. Another guy who's been pretty productive for TCU. He's got a lot of tools that you really like. You pair him alongside J.C. Horn. Tyrese Knight, the linebacker that I love that I just don't understand why he's not getting more love. He's a very... Very good run defender, comes downhill as a pass rusher as well. I think that's going to be very intriguing. And then we took Jalen Carley as a just an extra safety there. You got some upside there. He was still on the board. We took him to kind of be our jammy chin replacement. I think it's a great draft for Carolina. Um, you got positions in need. Maybe you go receiver again. But overall, I think the Panthers did a pretty solid job. Then we got the Chicago Bears who have four picks, so we'll be quick here. Caleb Williams, obviously, they're not going to not take Caleb Williams. And number nine, Romo Dunze is still on the board. Again, if he's there, you take him. I think the value is tremendous. You've got a guy that's – you can now play Keenan Allen on the slot with DJ Moore and Romo Dunze on the outside. Uh, then we took Chris, Chris Braswell on the board at 75. I was like, yes, 100%. I love Braswell. Go back to my edge rusher rankings. He's very athletic. He's a pretty solid mover as well, and you love what he can offer as a pass rusher to play on the opposite side of Montez Sweat. And then we took Gabe Hall at 122. They drafted Zach Pickens last year. They drafted Gravon Dexter. I don't think it hurts to add more pieces there on the interior. We took Gabe Hall, who's very freakishly athletic. He's at 295. People have compared him to Chris Jones. That's all I'm going to say. I like Gabe Hall. He's my number uh, that was the final pick we made for the Chicago Bears. Then we had the Cincinnati Bengals. I absolutely love the Cincinnati Bengals draft. I love it. We took Troy Fatone to start it off. A guy who could play tackle, could play guard. Whether he starts right away doesn't really matter. I think Troy Fatone, just that offensive line versatility, you love to see it. Then we took Chris Jenkins at number 49. Another guy, a very good run defender. His dad played in the NFL. Coming from a blue blood school like Michigan, he's going to provide some very nice upside on that interior defensive line. Jutavian Sanders on the board at 80. Again, I love that pick for them. You get a receiving tight end in the middle of the field. You love it. Kalen Carson from Wake Forest. I'm, I'm higher on Kalen Carson than consensus. I think this is great value for him. He's very athletic. He's he's very electric, I guess would be a term I would use. I love that. Then Tyrone Tracy was the pick. Tracy is a guy that I will be doing a little bit more evaluating, but the buzz on him is very hot right now. I think he's going to end up going around this fourth, fifth round ultimately. Uh, then Layden Robinson at number 149, a very good offensive guard. He's kind of gotten overshadowed by a lot of other really good guards, but Another just kind of rotational piece potentially for them. And then we took our first wide receiver at 194 when Jacob Cowing is still on the board. You get a slot speedster like Jacob Cowing at 194 to pair with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. You're cooking. Then we took Javante Jean-Baptiste out of Notre Dame, another solid edge rusher. We went back to Notre Dame to make the sexiest quarterback room 
that was genuinely the reasoning for taking it. Sam Hartman at 237. They need a backup quarterback anyways. I think it makes sense. Then we took the center, Matt Lee from Miami. We get offensive line help. We improved some, we got some weapons for this offense. And then we improved the defensive line a little bit. I love what we did for Cincinnati. And this is this is one of my favorite drafts that we have all day. Then we have the Cleveland Browns. We took Mason McCormick at number 54, a guy that comes with loads of experience. You look at the interior offensive line, Wyatt Teller, Joel Batonio, Ethan Pochich. Good trio. If one of those guys goes down, they've got nothing. Mason McCormick has over 3,000 snaps of experience. You take him. Then we took Makai Wingo out of LSU. It says Ringo. It's Wingo. Um, a solid defensive tackle prospect. Uh, if you guys saw, just did a video on him last night. Very athletic. Very solid. Go check that one out if you haven't. Joe Milton is a guy that Tennessee, uh, that Cleveland has brought in for an interview. It just makes sense. They need more quarterback help. They tried with DTR last year. You lost Joe Flacco. Maybe go get a guy like Joe Milton. Jackson Mitchell at 206, good coverage linebacker out of UConn. And then we took the edge, very athletic, Brennan Jackson at 243. Nothing crazy, but with five picks, I think we made the most of it for the Cleveland Browns. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys. Now, this is a pick. This is a team that I actually like what we did for quite a bit. We took Amarius Mims, who I think could play left tackle, can play right tackle. You love his versatility along that offensive line for you. I also think he has the highest upside of any tackle in the entire draft class. Jonathan Brooks out of Texas seems like a foregone conclusion that that's where Dallas is going to go. They've had access to his medicals that no other team has had, so they know the severity of his injury. I think there's a lot of buzz there that Dallas is going to take him at 56. Then we took Jeremiah Trotter, the linebacker out of Clemson. I'm a big Jeremiah Trotter guy. I had him as my number six, or no, I had him as my number four linebacker. I love what he has to offer at, as in terms of a run defender as a blitzer athletically. I'm a big fan. I've got him at 87. Took Drake Nugent, the center out of Michigan, um, at number 174. Jerry loves to take Michigan guys. Nugent is undersized, but he's very productive for Michigan. Took him there. At number 216, we went with John Marie Croma out of James Madison. Some defensive tackle depth can play edge as well on an odd front. We took Miles Harden out of South Dakota. I love Miles Harden. I think he's one of the more underappreciated corners. Might do a video on him in the next coming week or so as I do my cornerback rankings. I think Miles Harden is a very good corner. And then lastly, we took Khalid Duke out of Kansas State, a guy that's interesting. He's very athletic, but he's got absolutely zero pass rush moves. Um, I think 244 way down the board. You take the chance there. So we've got that for the Dallas Cowboys. Next up, we got the Denver Broncos, another team. I quite like what we did. We took Bo Nix out of Oregon at 12. It just feels like there's some buzz there for that. I know Sean Payton and Bo Nix. I know Bo Nix has come in for meetings. It just feels like a Sean Payton quarterback. At number 76, we took Tanner Bordellini over Bo Limmer. Uh, he's going to probably play center in the league, but he's got versatility to play guard. He even took snaps at tackle for Wisconsin. So you love the versatility there. Another really good athlete. Uh, if you guys, again, go check out the video on Tanner Bordellini if you haven't. Then we took Devontae Walker for the Broncos at 121. The value was just absolutely ridiculous. The speed... His ability to win downfield, you had to take him. Even though he's not the most physical receiver, the value was crazy at 121. We took Tyler Davis out of Clemson at 136. Not the biggest Tyler Davis guy. I was a very big Tyler Davis guy. He has fallen way down my board. Uh, but I think the value is fine at 136. Uh, Decamrion Richardson out of Mississippi State, very athletic, very solid to intangibles that you love from him. We took him at 145. At 147, we took Garrett Greenfield out of South Dakota State. Could probably be a starting tackle for the Broncos. I love that value. Thomas Harper was the safety we took out of Notre Dame. I like Harper. I think he's got some slot versatility as well. And then our last pick, we banked on the upside of Ayabi Okianoma out of Charlotte. I actually really like this pick, a guy that I've been meaning to do some study on, but very athletic. I've heard some very good things about him. So at 207, I think it makes a lot of sense. And the next team is the Detroit Lions. Um, interesting draft from the Lions. We took Nate Wiggins to start it off with. Uh, and the size concerns, he weighed in better at his pro day. So you like to see that. 
We took Marshawn Neeland out of Western Michigan, one of the most powerful players in this class. I really, really like the value here. Then we went Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky. So, I mean, now you have Corley who could be a slot guy with Amon St. Brown, Jamison Williams as your other receivers. This receiving trio is ridiculous. We took Ladarius Henderson, who's got tackle versatility, but he's going to be a guard in the NFL level. A bit undersized, but a very athletic player. We took him at 164. Jordan Jefferson out of LSU. I like the defensive line versatility. Uh, Quantez Stiggers out of the Canadian Football League. They was the first player that the Lions brought in for their uh, 30, 30 visits. They, they brought in Quantez Stiggers. They seem to really like him. I've got him at 205. And then we took KT Leveston out of Kansas State. Solid draft for the Lions. Nothing crazy. I don't think this is a team that has many needs. We took a couple corners for him. I like this for Detroit. Then we got the Green Bay Packers, another team I really like how this draft turned out for. I took Peyton Wilson at number 25. I just feel like Peyton Wilson might end up in the first round because he's so athletic. He's such a good tackler. I took him with the Packers' first pick. Then we took Ennis Rakestraw out of Missouri with their second pick. Yes, the production's limited, but this guy is electric, a very good athlete, comes downhill very well, defends the run. You'll really like that. We took Cooper Beebe. You love that offensive line versatility that he offers. He's a great run to run blocker. Excuse me. Took him at 58. At 88, we took Leonard Taylor out of Florida. This is a guy that is not a nose tackle that was being used as a nose tackle. So when you look at the numbers, you're going to be underwhelmed. This guy's very, very good. We got him at 88. I feel pretty good about that. We got Jaden Hicks to be a safety option there to pair alongside Xavier McKinney. I love that. Caden Wallace can be a developmental tackle. A lot of people are starting to come on to Caden Wallace late in this process. Seems to have some buzz. We took him at 126. Maybe one of the biggest reaches, but I think the way this draft finishes is so strong. Luke McCaffrey out of Rice feels like a Packers type of receiver. Javian Cohen out of Miami as well. Kamani Vidal out of Troy as a third running back. Jalen Green out of James Madison. I really like him in the seventh round. I think that's excellent value. And then Charles Turner, the center out of LSU. I think this is an excellent draft for Green Bay. It was getting A for me 100%. Yeah, they have a lot of picks, but I think they made the most of them. Unlike, I mean, Buffalo catching a stray, but I didn't love that Buffalo draft. Just kind of how the board fell, but this draft was excellent for Green Bay. The next team are the Houston Texans, another team that absolutely crushed it. Tavondre Sweat. Being the pick, I know there was a report while we were doing this that he got arrested. Doesn't change a thing for me. Happened with Jalen Carter last year, still ended up in the top 10. We got some more defensive help. This is a very heavy defensive draft. We took Junior Colson and Mike Sainer still from Michigan. Uh, Colson, one of the better coverage linebackers in this class. Sainer still one of the better slot corners in this class. We also picked up Hunter Norzad, a developmental center. I know they took that last year, but... Norzad is very good. There's some buzz around him as well. Blake Corum out of Michigan at 127. Look, I know you guys know if you follow the channel, I'm not a big Blake Corum guy. The value was way too good there. 127, you got to take it. Jalen Coker out of Holy Cross. Get familiar with him. I think he's going to be picked around the fourth to fifth rounds. Ended up falling to the sixth here. We had to take him. Miles Cole is like a light version of what Tyree Wilson was last year. Freakishly athletic, six-year senior. You don't love that. Jaden Crumity out of Mississippi State. Just some more defensive line help. You'll love to see that. And then we took Carlton Johnson out of Fresno State. We went a couple of nickels here, and Carlton Johnson and Sainer still. But in the seventh round, you're just hoping one of these guys hits Crumity and Johnson. We'll see what they can end up being for them. Next up, we got the Indianapolis Colts, my team. Colts fans, you might not like it. I love it. I think this draft is very good. For the Colts, we took Quinion Mitchell at 15, the best corner in the draft, in my opinion, the first corner off the board. Had to take him. Ricky Parasol out of Florida. Look, he's got the connection with Anthony Richardson already. He fits a need and he's got a high RAS score. Feels like a Colts pick. Cole Bishop out of Utah, another really good safety. Tested out really well. He's got speed, comes downhill, defends the run well. He's good in coverage. I love that pick. Muhammad Kamara at 117, another very good athlete for the Colts to get. Maybe a bit undersized, but they just need to try and hit on one of these edge rushers. We take Kamara in the fourth. 
Jalen Ford, a linebacker. We know Ballard loves his day three linebackers. Jalen Ford's great in coverage. I like that. Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona, very good receiving tight end. Maybe a bit similar to Will Mallory last year, but who knows what's going to happen in that tight end room. And then Zion Logue out of Georgia, just some more defensive tackle help. I like this draft for the Colts. I think they absolutely crushed it. I mean, it would probably get around a B for me in the real draft, but I think it's a solid draft. Then we got the Jacksonville Jaguars, who might have had the best draft of any team, period. Uh, Terry and Arnold at 17. A lot of people CB1. He is my CB2. Uh, but I still like Arnold. I think it's a big need for them to just continue to add in that secondary. We took Roman Wilson at number 48, just a very good slot weapon who can separate. I love this fit for them. Then we took McKinley Jackson out of Texas A&M. Could play that nose tackle role. He's a lot more athletic than his RAS score is going to lead you to believe, and he's got a lot of room to grow into his frame. We took Zach Zinter at 114. If it wasn't for a broken leg, I mean, we could be looking at him a lot differently, but I like him in number 114. We took Bo Braid at 116, which I love that value as well. Bo Braid is a top five safety in this class for me. You got him at 116, you're feeling really comfortable. Will Shipley at 153. We took a we took a shot here. Yes, they drafted Tank Bigsby. You got Travis Etienne. Bigsby doesn't feel like a receiving back, though. That's what I think Will Shipley can be. Not a big Shipley guy. Nelson Caesar out of Houston at 212. Solid value as well there. And then we took Isaiah Williams out of Illinois to round it off. Just another receiver. Love this for Jacksonville. I think they absolutely cooked. And the next team are the Kansas City Chiefs, another team I love this draft for. Adonai Mitchell out of Texas, your first pick. You get size, you get speed. You're already feeling really good. We took Mason Smith at 64. I think he's going to end up going in the top 75 picks uh, because a lot of people are really going to be in love with how high of a ceiling he has athletically. Still very raw, coming off an ACL tear a couple years ago, but I think the upside's there. A team that could use him as a rotational defensive tackle to kind of learn under Chris Jones. I love that. Then you got Patrick Paul out of Houston. Fits a scheme perfectly in Kansas City. I love that. MJ Devonshire, a solid corner prospect to kind of replace the Jarius Sneed at 131. Eddie Fawn, Ulafoshio at 159. Another very solid draft pick for them. They get a good linebacker who had a very productive season. At number 173, Jared Wiley out of TCU. Very good tight end. Some have compared him to a baby Travis Kelsey myself included, uh, you, you take that guy, and then you finish it off with Austin Reed, who I think could be a starting quarterback for the Chiefs. I, I'm kidding. Uh, but he could be a solid backup. I know you picked up Carson Wentz, but I hate to tell you, Chiefs fans, he's not good. Next up, we've got the Vegas Raiders. I know Raiders fans might not like this class. I think it's a great draft in Vegas. Talise Fuaga kicks it off. The Oregon State offensive tackle um, could play tackle, could play guard. You just love the versatility he offers. We took Trey Benson at 44. Uh, I haven't messed around with a running back this high to the Raiders. I love it. I absolutely love it. With Josh Jacobs out the door, I mean, you got you to gotta make a move, and I think Trey Benson's a great pickup. Then you took Spencer Rattler in the third. Maybe he could be a starter. He feels like a Raiders type of quarterback. Uh, very athletic, great arm, pretty Pretty high upside with Spencer Rattler at 77. You feel pretty good. We took Austin Booker at 112, who is a very athletic edge rusher to pair alongside Max Crosby, who many have compared him to. You get him, you develop it. Maybe you move Tyree Wilson on the inside. I like that for him. We took Dwight McLaughlin out of Arkansas, one of my guys in this class. Very good cornerback prospect. Keith Randolph out of Illinois. We all talk about Jerzon Newton. Keith Randolph was pretty solid for them as well. We improved the defensive line a little bit more. We get Bub Means out of Pitt, solid receiver prospect, and then Jordan McGee, the linebacker from Temple at 229. I think this is an awesome draft for the Raiders. Then we've got the LA Chargers. This might be the best draft. I know I've said that about quite a few now, but the Chargers draft is insane. Malik Neighbors at five. Okay, you're feeling pretty good. Kingsley Suomatia out of BYU. A guy who has tackle, can play tackle for you, is probably more a right tackle anyway, so you like that, but he can also swing guard. So I like that pick. We took Cam Hart at 69, probably my favorite pick in the draft. If you know, you know. At number 105, we took Cameron Kitchens. 
I like that. Safety's a need for them. After Nasir Adderley retired, you get Cam Kitchens, who's still a very high safety on my board. I know the Raz score wasn't there, but the game tape is ridiculous. Dwayne Carter out of Duke, another guy I really like. Um, solid defensive lineman can help add interior. Um, Marshawn Lloyd dropped to 140, and we had to do it. I mean, the running back room was already slim. And you get Marshawn Lloyd in the fifth, excellent value. Ryan Flournoy out of Southeastern Missouri State. I love that pick for them. Just continue to add receivers. CJ Hansen and Tylen Grable, some offensive line depth at 225 and 253. The Chargers cooked. Uh, then we talked about the Rams. Uh, they had a pretty solid draft as well. Jerzon Newton, my number one defensive tackle. We took him there. I took Ben Sennett at 52. I think there's a chance that the Rams could go this direction. We saw Tyler Higby get hurt in the playoffs. I think there's a chance that they could be looking to go tight end. I went with Ben Sennett. I think he fits perfectly. You can line him up almost anywhere. Andrew Phillips to play a slot corner role for you at 83. Blake Fisher can play that right tackle for you seamlessly. We got him at number 99. And then some very good picks down the board here. Bucky Irving is a perfect complement to Kyron Williams. He fell to 154. At 155, we took Michael Pratt. At 196, we took Jalen Harrell. Michigan's got a couple of these guys. I took him at 196. Trey Taylor out of Air Force at 209, a solid safety prospect. We took Cornelius Johnson at 213. I, I like this for them quite a bit. Feels like a Rams type of receiver. We took Daquan Hardy at 217, and then Aaron Casey with 254. I love this draft for LA. And then we've got the Miami Dolphins. Uh, six picks. I think we did a very good job, though. Jackson Powers Johnson, the best interior offensive lineman in this draft class. You got him at 21. Then you got one of the better defensive tackles in this class, Braden Fisk at number 55. They went back to Florida State in the fifth round to kick Johnny Wilson. I'm not a Johnny Wilson guy. At 158, I think this makes sense. Can play tight end, good blocker, great size. You get a pretty good speedy guy as well for his size. Kamal Haddon at 184. Very good value there as well. Uh, one of my favorite corners in this draft class. Don't think he's getting nearly enough love. Uh, Sione Vaki at 198 can play running back. Also as a safety. You'll love that versatility there. Um, but he's a solid safety. And then Braden McGregor out of Michigan at 241. I'm just a solid edge rusher in that room. Nothing crazy. I think it's a pretty solid draft for the Miami Dolphins, all things considered. And then we got the Minnesota Vikings. At number 11, I went Dallas Turner. I was like, well, if we're not trading back, I'll take Dallas Turner. And that's what I did. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. at number 23 made the most sense. I mean, we're not going to get a quarterback at 108. If we're going to get a quarterback, it's going to be Penix. Maybe the best ball placement in this class. There's buzz that he goes in the first round anyway, so I don't think it's completely out of the question. <laughs> um, then we took Brandon Coleman out of TCU. I like this pick for them. Good guard. Christian Boyd out of UNI. Another pretty solid move for him. Um, a guy who I compared to Aline McNeil in my video last night. Go check that one out. A very good defensive tackle. Good athlete. Um, we took Marcellus Dial at number 157. Tommy Eichenberg at number 167. Uh, Jalen Simpson at 177. So just really trying to improve that secondary, that defense a little bit more. I think they did a good job. We took David White at 230. David White's a nice receiver uh, from Western Carolina. Probably a name you haven't heard much of. I like that. And then we took Mason Pline. Not really a guy I'm too familiar with. I got him at 232. Uh, number The next up, we got the New England Patriots. Uh, J.J. McCarthy was my pick. Um, over Drake May, I just think that McCarthy's got a very real chance of going ahead of May right now. There's a lot of buzz around him. Uh, we took Keon Coleman. I think this is kind of the receiver that they need. A guy that could just be a go-get-it receiver for J.J. McCarthy. I love that. We took Kieran Amagaji out of Yale uh, to be your left tackle. Feels like a Patriots pick. Jerry and Jones and Theo Johnson, maybe some of the best value picks in this class. Jerry and Jones could be that slot corner for you alongside Christian Gonzalez and then Theo Johnson. The upside on him at the tight end position is there. Uh, the tight ends and running backs fell, as you can tell. Ray Davis at number 180, another guy I think is going to be a starting running back in the league for New England in this scenario. 
Sandita Anderson out of Grambling State at 193. High upside, very athletic. Edge rusher feels like the right pick. And then we took Taj Washington with the final pick. New England did a great job as well. I think this is a team that would be feeling very good about the way the draft class turned out. And I, I like this for New England. Then we got the New Orleans Saints. For a team that has two picks in the top 150, and then they pick at 150, this draft came out just about as good as you could imagine. Olu Fashanu and Jalen Polk, your first two picks. Love it. Olu adds that offensive line. He can start at left tackle for you right away. Jalen Polk is a guy that I really like. As a receiver, he kind of reminds me of Chris Godwin. I think he can play in the slot, can play in the outside. He's got good size. He's physical. You got that there at 45. At 150, we took Javon Solomon out of Troy. You got Chase Young. You still need edge rushers. Javon Solomon's production at Troy has been off the charts. We took Jawan Briggs out of Cincinnati and proved that interior defensive line a little bit, get a little bit beefier. Isaiah Adams out of Illinois and proved the interior offensive line. You feel pretty confident there. Cade Stover out of Ohio State at 175, a tight end that I didn't love, but for the for the Saints that need a tight end, great value. Johnny Dixon and Ryan Watts to improve the secondary, and then Amari Gaynor out of North Carolina. Those picks, I like the Dixon pick and the Watts pick. Um, I, I think it's a pretty solid draft for the Saints. Uh, I think the Saints fans will be very happy if the draft turned out like this. With my next pick, we've got the New York Giants. Uh, Drake May fell to us at six. We had to take him. Uh, we know the Giants have been heavily linked to Drake May, and I think it just makes a lot of sense. Max Melton out of Rutgers was our next pick to pair alongside Deontay Banks. Felt pretty good about that one. We took Jalen McMillan out of Washington, another player that I felt pretty good about. Isaac Garando out of Louisville, uh, excellent running back, I think. You pair him with Devin Singletary, you feel pretty good about that running back room. Kenny Logan out of Kansas, safety could have been addressed a little bit higher, but we took it at 166. Kenny Logan is very solid. He does a lot of things very well. And then Kingsley Egukon out of Florida. We're going to play him at guard because we got John Michael Schmitz. I like this for them. I think it's a solid draft for the Giants. I actually think the offensive line, uh, they did a pretty good job. It looks like Jermaine Eleanor is going to be playing right tackle. You're going to move Evan Neal to right guard to replace Mark Glowinski. And then that left guard spot is kind of the only hole. We're going to try and play Kingsley Agukon there. But I like this draft for the Giants. You get your franchise quarterback. He gets him some protection, weapons, and then improve the secondary. I like this for the Giants. For the Jets, another team I think had a pretty solid draft. Uh, very much a mock draft guy, uh, Jets draft. Brock Bowers at number 10. Just was the best value. If you're not going to trade back, take best player available. It's Brock Bowers. And Roger Rosengarten at number 72 can be a is a very athletic tackle. A guy that I still need to study, but uh, a lot of really, really good things are being heard about Roger Rosengarten. Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest is a guy that I really like. Incredibly athletic, very good in the box. Got him at 111. At 134, it was Cardi, Carter Bradley out of South Alabama. Uh, a quarterback that's... Got invited to the Senior Bowl at a very good hula bowl as well. I'm going to be interested to watch how he does. Anaya Smith out of Texas A&M, a slot receiver that is going to be a speedy guy for you at the next level. And then Fabian Lovett and Jackson Sermon as the Mr. Irrelevant of this class. They get some defensive line help. And then Jackson Sermon, who go watch the video. I love Jackson Sermon at 257. I thought it was great value. For the Philadelphia Eagles, um, we took Cooper DeGene. Got him listed as a DB because he could play safety, he could play corner. I think that's great for him. Edger and Cooper fell to 50, and we took Christian Haynes at 53. You love both those picks, really. You get a good linebacker who can rush the passer and is good in coverage and is a solid tackler. And then you get Christian Haynes, who I think is a just a very good athlete. Can You play him at guard, move Cam Jurgens back to center. And then we took Cedric Johnson out of Ole Miss. Nice, nice edge rusher help. They've got some guys there that I like, but I think Cedric Johnson could be a part of that rotation. Jamari Thrash out of Louisville at 161, one of my favorite players in this draft class. Could be that slot weapon for the Eagles at the next level. Chow Smith-Wade, we took him here in hopes to convert him. He's going to sit behind Devontae Maddox for the year, and then he's going to be playing – 
and that slot next year. I actually really like this pick for him. At number 172, he took Frank Crum out of Wyoming, and then we finished it off with Logan Lee out of Iowa. Pretty solid draft, I would say, from the Philadelphia Eagles. Addressed a lot of their needs. Uh, I better be. I'm sure I'll be hearing from Eagles fans, though. They're never happy. Uh, next up, we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers. This might be another team that I think just dominated this draft class. J.C. Latham, you get your starting right tackle. Good. Kamari Lasseter, you get a good corner, a very good corner who's probably going to start for you immediately. Good. Cedric Gray, a linebacker who can cover. Yes, he's got missed tackle concerns, but he's playing with Patrick Queen. Good. You get another good linebacker on the inside. Jermaine Burton, you get a good outside receiver to pair alongside with George Pickens. Awesome. Kalen Bullock, great rangy safety who can play in that strong safety role as Minka roams the field. Good. Gabriel Murphy, an edge rusher that I'm not the highest on, but you could see potential there. could be a rotational piece. Also good. And then you get Dylan McMahon to convert to center. Absolute home run draft for the Steelers. I think they might have had one of the best drafts in terms of just they knew what they needed and they drafted it. I love this for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Next up, we've got the San Francisco 49ers. I really like this draft as well. We took Zach Frazier to start it off with. And they went offensive line a few times. Javon Foster, Travis Glover, both solid offensive linemen that we took. But I think they need to improve that O-line. They improved the secondary. You got TJ Tampa, great in zone coverage. He's going to be good on that outside opposite of Charvarius Ward. You feel pretty good about that. You picked up Evan Williams as well. Braylon Trice at 94. The value was there. Yeah, the athletic numbers are concerning. But Braylon Trice at 94. It's solid value. Javon Baker, Audric Estime. Estime is an interesting one. I wanted to take a power back for this team because I don't think they have that. Estime at 135 made a lot of sense to me to play with Christian McCaffrey. Javon Baker is a receiver that everybody seems to be coming on, on board with. We took him at 132. Tip Ryman, we took a blocking tight end who's got receiving type upside. Um, I love the value at 176. And then we took Evan Anderson at 211, a guy that I really, really like out of Florida Atlantic. So good draft from the Niners. Addressed a lot of their needs, got some weapons, got some offensive line help. Good draft from San Francisco. The Seattle Seahawks, another team I think had a pretty solid draft class. Graham Barton was the pick at 16, the line versatility, could play tackle, guard, center. That's that. Michael Hall at 81, he improved the defensive line. He's got some run stuffing abilities. He got that at 81. I took DJ James at 102. I know that they that Seahawks fans won another corner. And that's what I did. I took another corner for him and DJ James to play with Tariq Wallen and Kobe Bryant. At number 118, I took we took James Williams um, to play in that box sort of safety role, which is kind of where Miami played him. Also has linebacker potential for you as well. Xavier Thomas out of Clemson. Very athletic edge rusher at 179. I think the value is pretty solid there. We took Jordan Travis at 192, and then we finished it off by taking DeCorian Clark. Very solid draft from the Seattle Seahawks. Then we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I love this draft as well. The secondary, I think, is the big need for Tampa Bay. Renardo Green, Kitten Oladapo, and Willie Drew. Two starting quality corners, and then your starting strong safety long term. You also improved the edge rushing room by adding, in my opinion, the best edge rusher in the class and Lao to Latu. Bo Limmer is your starting center right away as Ryan Jensen uh, heads out the door. And then they got two weapons here. Blake Watson as a nice rotational running back to Rashad White. And then Malik Washington, who I think is a perfect slot receiver. You can pair with Godwin and Evans. I love this for Tampa Bay. I don't think they missed on any of these picks. They addressed needs. They got value. I love it if I'm the Buccaneers. As we come close to the end, the Tennessee Titans. Um, interesting draft from Tennessee, I would say. Um, we went, obviously, Joe Alt with the first overall, uh, with our first pick. We took Chop Robinson at 38, though. Haven't really messed around with that, but I like this idea. Very athletic edge rusher that you could kind of develop into being a superstar. Curtis Jacobs at number 106, a very good coverage linebacker. We took him there. Chris Abrams drain. We took at 146, can be just another corner in that room. I like his abilities in zone coverage quite a bit. Uh, Jaquan Jackson, a speedy slot receiver. You get him at 182. Uh, Jaheim Bell at 227. I'm very low on Jaheim Bell. Um, 
but I like his versatility. He could be a fullback, could be a slot guy for him. Could kind of do a lot for your offense. We took Eric Watts out of UConn, um, and then we took Julian Pearl. Just got – I feel like it's a pretty solid draft. I probably would have taken a safety for this team, but I think they did a pretty solid job drafting. And, um, yeah, three seventh-round picks, and you get value at all three. And then the final team are the Washington Commanders, who – Took Jaden Daniels, number two. It seems like that's going to be the pick. Jordan Morgan, who could play left tackle, could play guard, can play really anywhere. We took Ladd McConkey at number 40. And then I think the draft really started to heat up. Adisa Isaac at number 67. Trevin Wallace at number 78. Dominic Pooney out of uh, out of uh, Kansas, number 100. Dallin Holker at 139. Have you guys seen any misses yet? Tyke Smith. Out of Georgia, 152. And then DeAndre Prince out of Ole Miss at 222. They hit on every single one of these draft picks. You got speed. You got offensive help, O-line help, um, secondary help. You got improved the D-line. I think this is great for the commanders. And that is it. That is our seven-round mock draft for every NFL team. Let us know which picks you agreed with, which ones you didn't like. would love to know which how you guys think we drafted for your team. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.